Welcome to Field Sports Britain, and once again it's Shouty Man in a Field. Coming up, we're on a Munty mission. Roy Lupton's got a nice buck lined up, but with Captain Camo behind the camera, could it all end in tears? That'll come out in the edit. <laughs> we have our regulars, top gun dog training tips from Skinner's News Stump and Hunting YouTube. First, for the first time in 2013, we're actually on the pigeons, and we're with Andy Crow talking knockdown power in the first of our new series, Crow How. It's the first pigeon shooting outing of 2013. It's not through lack of trying, but the weather and the seasons being all over the place have meant that the birds and the crow have been difficult to get into the same place at the same time. Finally, it's starting to happen, especially in this corner of the farm where the birds are flitting between winter rape, spring peas and buds off the trees. What a lot of the pigeons are doing at the moment, they're still feeding on buds, which they should be finished on now. Um, from now onwards we should be hopefully picking up some good easy easy days pigeon shooting but it's not going to happen for a while because they're going to be on these buds as soon as you start shooting they're going to going to go away and sit in the ash trees and on the oak on the flowering and on the beaches and that and uh, they're going to be on those. The winter rape at this end of the field has struggled in the bad weather that's beset the whole of England not just the southeast where we are today and the whole crop is behind which means the plants are small enough for the pigeons to land for a munch. In a normal year, this field would be a vibrant yellow with the plants too high for the birds to drop into. Andy knows where he wants to be, but that isn't always possible. I've got a field of uh, spring peas next door. I started on those a bit. So really, it's a bit of a draw to this corner. Um, the place I want to shoot is a bit further down the hedge, but um, I don't know if David can show you. We've got a telegraph pole and some wires going across. Um, so we can't shoot where I really want to shoot, so we're going to have to do second best, go just here somewhere. It looks like the wires are close to us, but they're not. They're 80 yards further down the field, um, so we're just going to hope that we can draw the pigeons up, up the field to where we want them, which is here. Andy has some new kit on test. A1 decoys, Lincoln shotguns, Game Ball cartridges and Jack Pike clothing have asked Crow to use and abuse their products and see if they have the right Crowdentials. Sorry. The Lincoln was fresh out of the box yesterday and old Crow has done all right with it so far. The old Lincoln doesn't seem to be doing too bad. It's making me look good. I've had uh, four shots, four kills, so I'm happy. Uh, no, sorry, five shots, five kills, so I'm happy. Um, it's going to take a bit of getting used to, I'm used to the safety catch being at the back of the trigger. On this one the safety catch is on top. Yeah, apart from that, yeah, it's, it's a good old thing. And the game board seem to be, clear pigeons seem to be performing well as well. Andy has always emphasised the importance of good cartridges for pigeon shooting, for that all-important knockdown power. To try and explain a bit about what Crow wants from a cartridge, we need some visual aids and a glamorous assistant. Earlier in the day, Andy, you were talking a bit about <laughs> knockdown performance yeah. of cartridges. Yeah. Um, and it's a difficult thing for people to grasp, isn't it? It's a bit subjective for yeah. some people. They don't quite know what it means, but they know what the results are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Um, so we've brought some handy visual aids along to try and explain this a little bit. So. Can you tell us what the kind of the key elements of knockdown power are? Dom, it's speed, size and weight of the shot. So you can have two projectiles that yep. are fundamentally the same size, yep. but one of them can weigh more than the other. So yep. a cricket ball, similar size to a tennis ball, yep. weighs a lot more. Yep. So that's going to have more energy and it's going to deliver yep. more knockdown performance than that. Yep. So lead shot, heavier than steel shot, yep. lead is always going to give more knockdown yep. than steel shot. Plus the lead deforms as well. So Basically that means that it's not passing through the bird, yeah. all the energy it has is it's being imparted into, into the, bird. the bird. Yeah, yeah. And the other thing of course is, is the speed. So for example if I were to chuck this tennis ball at your face very gently it would annoy you. Yeah. If I were to chuck the tennis ball at your head very hard it would probably result in me visiting A&E. More than likely yes. So we're going to demonstrate that with our handy dummy 
because Andy wasn't brave enough to stand here and let me throw tennis balls at him, even though he's seen me shoot and he's pretty sure I'll miss. In slow motion, we can see the jacket buckle to a greater degree as the ball gets heavier. Another thing that Crow wants to mention is density or tightness of the pattern. As this footage shows, the lead pellets and the game ball cartridge need to be fast, heavy, distort on impact and keep tight. Andy wants plenty of pellets finding the target. Seeing we're talking about Andy's style of shooting, these reverse shots show his gun is always swinging through the shot. We also spot that Mr Crow closes one eye just before pulling the trigger. It may not be the way they teach you at school, but it works for him. Back to the pigeon shooting and the birds are playing hard to get. Andy has a change around and sticks a whirly up with a couple of A1 decoys new Pro Flap models. Crow is not 100% sure he set them up properly as they're fresh out of the box, but help is at hand because A1 Decoys has a YouTube site with an instructional vid. The birds come in fits and starts, and we are constantly reminded that the best place would be on the corner near the wires, but that's life, and we are getting some sport. If the birds do keep to the trees, Crow claps them out for a couple of reasons. I've just had some pigeons land in the tree up there to the left. I'll just clap them out, otherwise other birds are just going to decoy straight into them and, and if you do have a shot you, you're scaring them anyway so you're better off scaring them out to get rid of it or get them moved on really if, um, so they don't hear the loud bang of a shot. The afternoon has flown by and it's a lot later than we'd imagined. Mrs Crow brings out a lasagna for one and all so it's time to pack up. They've got uh, upper sixes, about 65, 66, something like that and a crow and a jay which is quite nice. In the end, we pick up 74 woodies. Crow feels we would have doubled that if we'd been under the wires, but that's life. The most important thing for us is that Pigeon is finally back on the menu. Andy Crow there, ably assisted by the beautiful Dom. And if you want to know more about pigeon shooting, why not watch one of our slow-mo films explaining lead? They should be appearing in the cherry blossom behind me. Just click on that to go through to it. One of them even includes David hosing down his father-in-law. Speak of the devil, it is David on the Field Sports Channel News Stump. This is Field Sports Britain News. The European Union has turned its attention towards gun crime and is thinking of banning guns across Europe. Luckily, this is only at consultation level so far. There is time for you to have your say. Please follow the short code on the screen to the relevant EU page. A gun has been produced using a 3D printer. It's unlikely to threaten the market for Purdy's and Holland and Hollands, but it shows that regulations of firearms may soon be impossible. This is Cody Wilson of Defence Distributed, who calls himself a free market anarchist. Instructions for making the Liberator a plastic handgun are available on the internet. Now for any angler worth his or her salt, the Sportfish Reading Show Weekend is on this weekend, the 11th and 12th of May. With free parking and entry, the organisers call it the best fishing show of the year. With first-class facilities, demonstrations from some of the world's finest game anglers, kit, shopping, bars, hog roasts, it's a great day out for anyone into their fishing. Plus, we'll be there filming. Go to the Sportfish website to download the full schedule. He's back. High Street Cosmetics chain Lush, which backs the Hunt Saboteurs Association, got together with our friend Brian May to back a demo outside DEFRA last week. Around a dozen anti-badger cull protesters painted black and white gathered to sing and dance outside DEFRA's headquarters in central London. Not quite the flash mob that Brian promised. The feral hog problem in the US has a new cure. Meet the Dehogiflyer. US Air Force engineer Cy Brown and his hunting buddy James Palmer use a radio-controlled plane mounted with a thermal imaging camera for everything from finding feral pigs to tracking wounded pigs. Cy finds the pigs and James uses night vision to shoot them. And finally, here's a story that puts the European horse meat scandal into the shade. The Chinese have arrested 63 people for taking rat, fox and mink meat dyeing it and selling it as lamb at farmers markets in Shanghai. So far this year, nearly a thousand people have been arrested across China for selling fake, poisonous or contaminated meat, and more than 1,700 underground butchers and processors have been closed down. Enjoy your tea. 
You are now up to date with Field Sports Britain News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts. Thank you, David. Now, Munt Jack. And David, if not the finest newsreader in the world, is a very able cameraman. So I have to point out that David did film the first half of this Muntjac piece. However, the second half was filmed by someone who had to reassure us that he wouldn't break the camera. Now and again, if he's been a good boy, Roy is allowed to leave Kent. Today we're on an excursion to Hertfordshire. It's freezing and this was filmed a few weeks ago, but at least it's dry. He's a guest of William Aldis, who runs a sporting agency for stalkers and falconers. Roy first met him whilst flying his Goldie. Thank you very much for in, uh, inviting us down today. Obviously, right. I came and had a look with you earlier on in the season when we were flying the birds here. Yeah. And uh, we were after a few uh, a few hares, but we yeah. did notice that you've got a hell of a population of muntjac on Yeah, there. there's a fantastic population of muntjac here. There's been very little management of the numbers for the last 10 years before I took over the sporting on this estate. So. Lots of lovely big bucks and also some uh, large quantity of cull animals as well that we've got to deal with. Um, so. How many of you, or, you know, have you uh, you've been quite successful since you well, kicked we off? Well, start, we started um, in January really getting to grips with the uh, the cull animals because up until then we were doing a lot of the falconry work. So um, we've been averaging six to nine a week um, since the beginning of January and it's uh, been a relatively easy uh, time getting easy all of the deer. <laughs> The hope is we're going to get a nice buck today. It's all looking promising as we walk through the grounds with a mixture of open rides, conifer and broadleaf woodland. William describes his stalking as cheap, fun and within easy reach of London. Once we find a decent vantage point, we stop to see if anything decides to pop out for a bit of a browse. I mean, obviously Munchak feed pretty much all day long, but uh, around here they, they've, they've really taken to laying up in these wood, in these woodlands here and uh, moving out over the grassland. Just at the last, uh, just last, the last knockings. Um, the amount we see when we're out lamping foxes is just it's staggering. Great. Yeah. Obviously you can't do anything about them at that point in the day, but... Uh, it's, I mean, it's fantastic, it's it's fantastic it's, it's, territory for them, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Uh, absolutely stuff. Yeah. As we watch and wait, we experience four seasons in one day and draw a blank. But a barn owl keeps us entertained as we lie and wait a little further along. Then we spot a buck. The cover means Roy can't get a clean shot. He tries to call, but no response. With the light and our options dwindling, Will suggests that Roy takes a cull doe if the opportunity arises. It does, but this first one won't stand still. Another crosses from the other direction. This time Roy knocks her down. Food for the larder, but no trophy for the wall. We couldn't have left that any later. I mean, uh, that was right at last knockings. The light's pretty much gone on us. Luckily, she uh, fell on the spot at the shot, so we didn't have to follow her up, because trying to follow up in this light, in this thick cover, would have just been an absolute nightmare. So. Uh, she bowled straight over, and with uh, with optics on there that uh, that weren't quite as good, I very much doubt we would have had the opportunity to uh, get the shot because it was literally, yeah, light fading, last five minutes, and that's very often when it happens. So uh, yeah, very very exciting stuff. I really really do enjoy Munjack stalking. Fast forward a few weeks, and the Chuckle Brothers are both let out of Kent. We're going for round two with the Munjack, and what we've decided to do today, because David does seem to be somewhat of a Jonah when it comes to Munjack is we've ditched that cameraman and we've actually changed to one of the stars of Field Sports Channel who's agreed to come out and film for me today. So if we just spin the camera around and you should see that we have got Andy, young... A Andy Crow. <laughs> is it? I'm trying, to, I'm, I'm trying to do this so I don't have a double chin. <laughs> it doesn't work, does it? There you go, look yeah, at that. Look at that. Um, Isn't it scary when you look at yourself in a camera? Especially me. Um, 
It's not often I look at myself in a camera like this and you I've did. got my clothes on. <laughs> That'll come out in the edit. <laughs> or maybe not. The weather has improved dramatically and the deer are out to play. We're not retracing our steps, but working through the top woods. Will knows he has three big bucks and Roy has been offered one of them. A younger animal shows itself and Will suggests he takes it as part of the cull plan. It drops on the spot. A doe doesn't seem to be bothered that a 243 has just gone off 100 yards away. Roy still hopes that the big boy may show himself, but he is happy with the second stalk and his new crew. In a difference when you get weather like that, absolutely it's super. Considerably better than last time. <laughs> <laughs> Not freezing. That's well, you can't blame the deer from the last time, Kenny. That was just horrid. I, I quite frankly wanted to be uh, <laughs> somewhere in front else. Of the fire. <laughs> but no, that was super. Nice. Thank you very much. Thanks again for having us. Much appreciated. I've been really impressed with Mark today. I think he's. Yes. I mean, he's got fantastic artistic flair, hasn't he? Yeah, ma massive and lots more energy, running around like a loser. Yeah, I mean, I mean, David just looked like a sad potato. <laughs> potato. Okay, Mark's on the case. Very smooth, Mr Gilchrist. Well done, Mark. You're hired. But it's probably best if you don't work with Roy again. It's rolling. Just get okay. on with it. Well, we did get the camera back unscathed. And there was some additional footage on it, which we promised we wouldn't use. This is Mark explaining to Roy's Korean friend, Sang, that he didn't mean to be disrespectful when he touched his knife. Now, what Mark doesn't know is that Sang was brought up in the UK and is not a merciless ninja triad member who would have Mark pulled apart limb from limb, Gangnam style, at the drop of a tassely hat. My knife? Yeah, I'm sorry for touching your knife. You touched my knife? Yeah. Why? Oh, sorry, I wanted to look at it. <laughs> You're <a> f <laughs> winding. <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> you Sorry Mark, just to say it was Roy who set the whole thing up, not us. Next up, Kit Special. Kit Special this week looks at unusual guns on the gunsdirect.co.uk website. Guns you might not believe that you can buy and sell in the UK. Let's start with this 2-2 Browning Buckmark long barrelled pistol for £525. Good for rats with a backstop, it includes a Basca holographic red dot sight with muzzle brake. Browning has been making Buckmark pistols for nearly 30 years. Next up is a Swiss Arms Model 60 ISSF target pistol, also in 2-2 LR which costs slightly less at £500. It is a single shot match pistol with anatomical right handed grip and a 12 inch barrel that complies with UK firearms legislation due to counterbalances taking the length of the pistol to 24 inches overall. Finally, a combination gun, a Finn Classic 512S. It has a standard set of 12 bore over and under barrels, a 12 bore and triple two combination barrel set, and a 3006 barrel set. So good for pheasants, change barrels for foxing at long and short distances, change barrels again, and it's ideal for anything charging at you from boar to buffalo too. Price is £2,250. That's it, feast your eyes, fish into your pockets. Thanks for watching. This is Kit Special. Now let's have a look at what the world's got to say. It is Hello Charlie. Here's what the world's up to this week. Hello Charlie. This is Igor and Bastian from Holland. And today we do some damage control on the barnacle geese. I guess the farmer who called will be happy if we, if we shoot some. But if we scare off the Hello Charlie, Bill Poole, Air Navy Shooting Facility, Phoenix, Arizona, getting ready for the next stage of service rifle match. Hello Charlie, this is Bushcraft Essex UK again, and this week I am trying to get permission to do some pest control. Hello Charlie, my name's Tony, I'm about to go ratting, and I'm taking no chances. <laughs> <laughs> Hi Charlie. Kevin Adam here, out doing a bit of salmon fishing tonight and uh, unfortunately I've come to my favourite pool to find it basically completely destroyed. This small pool 
It used to be twice the width, probably 10 times the depth, um, but over the winter all the banks have collapsed, filled it up and it no, no longer holds anything. A real shame. Hello Charlie, uh, not shooting today but fishing. Uh, I like me to go fishing but here we are, nice 10 pound carp. Put this one back and then back to the foxes. Send us your own Hello Charlie. Film yourself on your mobile phone. Just a sentence saying Hello Charlie, who you are and what you're up to. Then share it or email it via YouTube, Facebook, Dropbox or you send it, you name it, to charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. Now a speedy top tip from the Skinner's Pet Foods experts. How to improve your gun dog. If you want your gun dog to get anywhere with retrieving, you have to get them heading off to the blind side of a wall. It's a matter of trust, as top gun dog trainer Howard Kirby explains. It's all about encouragement, it's all about his confidence. So what we do when he's quite young, but be very careful, don't start your dog jumping lots too young, otherwise you could damage his bones. What we do is jump them over the tiniest of junks, tiny log piles, maybe over a bale. Um, we've got a special jump run that, that, with a series of jumps in it to encourage dogs to go out and jump and jump and we can raise them progressively like a set of show jumps. Um, but that's it really, but in the shooting field, you know, the, the dog may have to jump as something as big as a five bar gate or a stone wall or a fence. It's all about his confidence, he needs to gain experience doing that. And not only does he hear what he be, need to be able to jump, but he needs to better jump with something in his mouth. So when he's got a big bird in his mouth, a cock bird or a hen pheasant, it's a lot of weight to carry in his mouth. He needs to learn to balance. It's quite awkward when he's in the air with that moving around. So it's a, a real skill and you need to do lots of practice to develop the dog's confidence to do it. Otherwise, one, he'll either hurt himself or you'll just not jump. We teach them to jump on command um, so that they're safe. Otherwise, dogs can jump. Try to avoid, avoid at all costs jumping barbed wire. It's very dangerous. You'll hurt your dog if you jump barbed wire with your dog. Sooner or later, it will go wrong. Howard Kirby runs Mullinscott Gun Dogs from Lane's Shooting School near Andover in Hampshire. Visit mullinscott.co.uk. This series on gun dog training tips is brought to you by Skinner's Pet Foods, maker of the field and trial range of gun dog feeds. Visit skinnerspetfoods.co.uk. From dogs to the world of hunting, shooting, and fishing, it is Hunting YouTube. This is Hunting YouTube, which aims to show the best hunting, shooting and fishing videos that YouTube has to offer. Viewer Alan Corbett sends in Dora's backcam peregrine taking a duck. Dora is a peregrine falcon and belongs to arguably the fastest bird species in the world. Even with a camera on her back, she fairly falls out of the sky onto this duck. Back on the ground and duck hunting late season in Missouri is a well-made promo film about shooting challenging late season birds with a guide called C&L Outdoors. The guns are on a small farm pond that attracts thousands of mallards. More bird action, this time from France with Chasse Fizin Setter Anglais. The man from Video Chasse Perche has his English setters doing just what they should be doing to a pheasant, and he does the rest. Louis from Essex Bushcraft likes on the water's edge 15 fly fishing in 18th century style. We are in the United States with the Pathfinder School for this video, which takes us back to a simpler form of angling. Barney Craggs sends in a film that's at the other end of the fishy scale. Fishy scale? Get it? We're in New Zealand, where the fishing show is trying to haul in a swordfish, only to have a Marco shark come for a scoff. It is, says Barney, a worthy reminder that we are not always the top predator. Our viewer Stripey McCatpus recommends MK PSG 12, where you will learn about practical shotgun shooting. In this film, practical shotgun and mini rifle comp at Crockettford watch the man compete in various leagues. If you're British and you want to get into this sport, have a look at ukpsa.co.uk. To South Africa, where Guy Baxendale is out after a trophy black wildebeest. He is in the Eastern Cape chasing a big bull. And finally, Paul Dowling sends in his latest film of goat stalking in Ireland. This is a stalk on a permission he's had for a few years now, where the farmer wants him to keep the goats under control. You can click on any of these films to watch them. If you have a YouTube film you would like us to pop into the weekly top eight, send it in via YouTube or email me the link, charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. Well, we are back next week, and if you're watching this on YouTube, you can subscribe to this channel if you click on the link that's in the cherry blossom up there, or go to our webpage, fieldsportschannel.tv, where you can click to follow us on Facebook or like us on Twitter or the other way around, or even go down to the bottom of the page, pop your email address 
in our constant contact box and we will email you every week about our programme that's at 7pm UK time on Wednesdays. This has been Field Sports Britain.